finish, let me finish here. I, I want to get you guys home enough to cook. When Jesus came to this world, he came because his father loved you. He didn't come because his father loved him. Think about it. When we leave this place, we're all going to stand and thank God that Jesus did come. Amen. And I was thinking about Jesus. Just stay with me for a second. He went through something that you and I, we go through. Anybody ever went to daycare or school? Anybody ever went to school? <laughs> Do you, you might not remember. Remember kindergarten? Now, if you didn't have siblings, if you didn't have siblings, or you had one child, or you had like one brother or sister, and they threw your little self in that kindergarten, you screamed all day. And then they had to, they had to tell you, your mommy coming back. My mommy coming back. My daddy coming back. And you know, and you, but you still, it didn't comfort you. You just accepted it. But when that child saw someone from their family come, the joy that hit that child's heart, erased all the pain. Amen. That's exactly what happened with Jesus. All right. Amen. He said, you're not going to leave my soul in hell, are you? Jesus was very afraid because it was a territory that he did not know. Not fear, like you would have fear, but it was something he didn't know. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he cried. He said, is there another way? God never answered. And when he was on the cross, when the Holy Ghost left him, his only family on earth, Amen. he couldn't take it. He would say, my God, my God, why has you forsaken me? And then he gave up the ghost, and then he had to spend three nights, and I need you to hear this because you need to understand, he had to spend three nights Three days, three nights in hell, away from anybody from his family. See, I don't know about you, but when you've been stripped of your family that you love, I'm not talking about the family that you really couldn't care less about. I'm talking about if you love somebody in your family and you were stripped from them. Now, I gotta remember, there was no light in hell. Jesus is the light. And he made you the light of the world, so he's down there in hell. The Bible says preaching to the spirits in prison. So he was not comfortable. Yes, yes. I want you to hear this. He was separated from none that he loved. And I can go as far as to say this. Even though we know he loved us, the love of God is in the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost was not in him. So if you don't have love, all you have is fear. Perfect love cast out fear. So I want you to understand when, he, when the Bible says God so loved the world, he sent Jesus to hell without God. He was not down there as God. Walking around and everybody in hell like, wow, what's that light? We never saw light. He was down there just like you would be down there. Yes, uh -huh. yes. That's why I said, Thou will not leave my soul in hell. Yeah. So three days he had to go down there and beat the devil. Yeah. I'm trying to help. Amen. But see, if we don't think like that, we're not going to know God loves us when we start getting hurt. Amen. Things are going to happen in this world that is going to hurt us. We're going to lose loved ones. We're going to say bad things. People are going to say bad things to us. And the only thing that's going to comfort you is God's love. Amen. Amen. Mothers are going to forsake you. Fathers are going to forsake you. Husbands and wives are going to forsake you. Children will even forsake you. But God will never forsake you. And you don't know that until you begin to understand that. He forsook Jesus. So he would never forsake you. I don't know, you know, and, and I just think I can say it in a better way. Jesus went through hell so that when you're going through it on the earth, 
he can comfort you by telling God, don't let them go through that. They can go through this, but they can't go through that and survive. He went through all of this because God the Father wasn't going to go through. 1 John 4.15 Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And God in him. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him. Give yourself some credit, people. If you're born again, God dwells in you. And he and God, and we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And God in him. I'm going slow. He that dwelleth in love, dwelleth in God. And God is dwelling in you. Amen. If God is in you, then love is in you. Amen. So there's no excuse for you not to know love. Amen. Amen. It's whether you want to know it or not. Yes. But like I said earlier, if you don't get the fact that Jesus was separated from love, from his Father, when he was in hell, he did not have the comfort you think he did. If you ever end up in hell, it's dark. It's no place. There is no hope. It's not even like prison where you can go up a ladder. There is no hope in hell. And unless the Holy Ghost came from heaven to rescue Jesus. Think about it. He was separated from love yes. so that you would never have to. Amen. But unless you recognize what he did for you was a sacrifice, you will never appreciate God's love. Amen. And when you're in a trial, you're not going to have the confidence that you need. Amen. The Bible says faith working by love. Amen. The Bible clearly says you know, many people will die for a righteous man. But for a sinner, nobody will give their life for a sinner. But God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. People don't think much of sinners, but God loves them. But this has to be the, the, the core of our being that there was a sacrifice because someone loved me. He left. See, y'all don't know what it's like. See, watch those little babies that get separated, especially if you loved your child and you breastfeeded that, breastfeeded, breastfed that child and you gave them warmth and every time they smelled, you were there. You hugged them, you embraced them. Anywhere you went, they went with you. That child was loved. That child was secure. Nowadays, you know, people have kids. I'm not saying, you know, you can put them on a bottle. People drink bottles. They there's milk in bottles just like there's milk in the restos. You know, but when you nurse the baby and the baby smells that, that body, and you know, and, and the, the whatever. I'm not a baby, but, you know, there's an inseparable connection. Amen. Amen. Jesus was always with his father. Amen. Never ever was he separated. Yes. 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 Amen. See, I don't know. I'm not going to throw nothing at you. You're not, you're not hearing this. He was never separated from his father ever. And now three days for something he didn't do? And it's not like he's walking the earth talking to people he said, hell. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. He said, hell separated from his father for you yeah. and me. Yeah. 
Amen. And so when you when you're thinking about God's love, if you don't know that or believe that, you'll never ever know God loves you. Amen. You know, you, you know, the hard part is being a father. You know, I always say that there was no good fathers in the Bible, but Abraham, he wasn't bad. You know, and so many fathers have not a, rep, a good reputation with their children. You can say something about somebody's father and out of respect, you might punch the guy in the face. But if you say something bad about your mother, before that guy finished saying mother, he was on the ground. You ain't gonna say nothing about my mother. Why? Because the mother's love was felt. You might not have understood your father's love. So when Jesus died, it was God expressing as much love as possible. And then, greater than that, God raised him from the dead. It wasn't enough for Jesus to die. Anybody could die. But when God raised him from the dead, now that was something. Anybody could die. Amen. So when you're thinking, you know, hey, how are my bills going to get paid? How am I going to help this? And how am I going to do that? You know what? God. Yes. Yes. You ever remember that little, little girl? She got pregnant. Little Mary. They said, Mary. You know, Mary said, how can this thing be? And the angel said, the Holy Ghost. Yes. 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 Jesus had a question. Even though he knew the word, there comes a time when you don't know what you know. When he was down there, he knew, he believed, he said to God, that will not leave my soul in hell. See, but the high was the Holy Ghost. The love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. I need help. I'm trying to tell you something. This same Jesus needed this same Holy Ghost. So there's got to be something with this Holy Ghost. He's not just Ikemashaka. He ain't got some little shaky shaky. He's the love of God. He's the power of God, the, the hope of God. He is Satan. Satan is not even God's enemy. God's enemy was death. The Bible says the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Why would death be God's enemy? Because death separates people from him. I don't know about you. That's my wife. I'm older than my wife. And if there was a man a little bit younger than me, a little more handsome than me, but if I loved my wife, I would have pushed him in the face. I don't have a problem. If I love her, you love her, we got fight. Tell the truth. See, all y'all gonna lie. When you love someone, it's yours. That's why when people break up, you break down. Because you put your love on them. All right, I'm leaving that. So, so God is a jealous God. And he said, you shall have no other God before me. So what does he do? He destroys all fake gods. You clean your car on Sunday, and the air goes out the top. Everybody want to hear me in English. Yeah. Right. Should be in church, but then, here you go, you're shopping. Woo! Where my wallet at? <laughs> Just got shoplifted. <laughs> God is a jealous God because he loves you. Yeah. There's not no competition to him. But he's like, I will have no other God before me. I will destroy your idols. Yeah. Let my wife, let my wife be looking at some young man. That's it. That boy going down. Cause my, I'm, young, I'm older than my wife, and then you know, and, and my hair gets a little bit aging. So I go to the box. Let me close. So anybody hear me? So you know, you gotta, you have to remember that. Jesus was separated from love down in hell for three days. 
Imagine leaving your child at a daycare center that loved you. That child have a fit. Soon as they close the door, their head be bust on the floor, kicking and screaming. And then you're gonna have some unsensitive lying caretaker smile and say, go ahead, mommy, we got it. And then they're gonna yank your little child. So Jesus, he's in hell for you and me. Separated. But there was a how. In the Holy Ghost, I, I can only imagine. Here he is, dealing with the devil as a man. See, y'all don't understand that. Y'all never have to deal with the devil. None of y'all have to deal with the devil. Y'all just been dealing with sin. Devil ain't really come up to you and say, you know what? You're my competition. I'm about to take you out. No. Your sin makes you his. So Jesus dealing with the devil as a man. One on one. But the Holy Ghost comes. And all the angels, oh, so you gotta understand. Maybe it's me. Maybe I watch too many things. Maybe I'm a man that I like. I like the hero movies. I don't like those movies where the guy and the girl and the kids, they be on the beach and they sleep and you walk out with popcorn as a beautiful. That's a lie. I like somebody, I like the bad guy dying. And I like the good guy that been shot in the head and then the, it flays the black and then it comes back. He's in the hospital with a band-aid on his head. He survived. I love the hero movies. You girls can keep your little kissy movies. Yeah. Give me a hero. Jesus is that hero. He's got some guy walking around with lambs on his arm. Telling everybody be nice. I said be nice. He said, I come to bring a sword. I'm trying to close. Ready, watch this. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Here it is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, what's it say? As he is, so are we in this world. Maybe it's me. If I had read that, I would have been so excited. As he is, so are we. It doesn't say, I'm going to be like him. It says, as he is, so am I. Think about it. You can do what he did. Amen. Nobody will be here. Lord, Lord, encourage me because they don't want to hear. They have their 45 minute limb. Come on, five more minutes. Three minutes. Two minutes. One minute. They always say amen. I say one minute. Watch this. Here it is, here it is, I love me perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Yes, thank you, Lord. Boldness in the day of judgment. Here you are, mind your business, mm -hmm. and you don't wake up. Oh, wow. You just about dead as a doorbell. How are you going to be bold now that you're dead? Right. Prophet, you might want to get up here. <laughs> How are you going to be bold now that you're dead? It says, here in is our boldness in the day that God judges us. Thank you, Lord. Because as he is, so are we. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Nobody will hear me. I was going to call you Little Irene. That's Little Irene. That's Little Irene. I would yeah. Think of it. You're going to stand in front of God with no guilt. Yes. Everybody else will be scared. Can I get up? Like this. Got me moving? You're going to stand in front of God like this. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Why? Because he's going to make it like that. Yes. Amen. See, what, what happens in, in our minds that we don't understand is you're only accepted by your parents. I can go to my mother. I go to my father. I don't care what they think about me. They can't disown me. To a head class, most of you disowned. <laughs> God can't disown you. Amen. What he paid for, he bought it. Amen. So in the day of judgment, you're going to stand bold. Yes. Because as he is, so are you. Right now. Think about it. 
anybody. Oh man, I'm, I'm there. Oh, I gotta go. Take it that way. T, why do you understand you're not afraid of God? Because His love is in you. Let me go here. Yeah, I, mean, I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm getting too excited. Because as He is, so are we in this world. There is no fear. Say no fear. No fear. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts yes. about fear, yes. because fear has torment. Yes. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Amen. If a man say I love God and hate his brother, he's alive. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? So if you ever want to follow, if you ever want to show somebody you love God, love the person next to you. Yes. You know that Samaritan woman that had a rock party? Yes. And they were testing Jesus. They wanted to stone her, but their rocks really had Jesus' name on them. Yes. Anybody here saying, I'm gonna help you right now. If you say it, it's gonna scare the hell out of you. Your tests are to really Blaspheme Jesus in your life. The devil wants you to act ungodly. Yes. So that the devils think that they can accuse Jesus. Because the Bible says in, in Revelation that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He wants you to fail tests. So that he can accuse the God in you to God. Well, you need to look at somebody and say, I'm not failing no more tests. I'm going to love people I don't like. Because he died for sinners. He died for the just, the unjust, the righteous, and the unrighteous. And we want to pick and choose who and how we love. But look, I got to close. Close my Bible. This way I can close for real. Watch this. Perfect love cast out fear. Because fear has torment. It's like putting three days in one minute, and I'm going to try and do it. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, the first thing they did was become afraid. When they were born, when, they were, when Adam was created and Eve was, came out of Adam, they were naked and unashamed. Naked and unashamed. The moment they sinned, they was ashamed, and they covered themselves. You remember when you was a little kid and you didn't want to run around butt naked? Then when you became a nice virgin teenager, virgin adult, just don't look at nobody who's going to believe the story. <laughs> and on your wedding night, you came to your wedding bed, and you came out the bathroom fully robed because no one saw you naked. And you were not ready to reveal yourselves. But because of sin, Adam and Eve covered themselves. Because he said, we heard your voice and we was afraid. The Bible says clearly that all men are afraid of death. You might not be afraid to get killed, but I can prove to you you're afraid of death. Because if you wasn't afraid of death, you would not be sinning. Because the bondage to the fear of death leads you to sin. See, it's, it's a cycle that you can't escape. We're sinning because sin wants us to die. And it's what sinners do. And what God does with his love for us, he breaks the cycle of sin and death from off of us. That's why it says perfect love cast out fear. Because fear has torment. And when we sin, we're showing our fear of God the wrong way. I'm going to close. Why would you say that, Preacher Joe? Once they sinned against God, they ran from him and tried to cover themselves. Later on, the Bible says God killed an animal and covered their nakedness. Think about it. Love 
is the only thing that can cover sins. Love shall cover a multitude of sins. So when God sent his son into the world, he sent them with the purpose that they will let me cover their sins if they see me sacrifice my son for them. Oh, yes. Wait, 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 anybody here want to get engaged? Anybody got any money on? No. All right. If you get an engagement ring, right? You go like this. You know, you tell the girl, you say, listen, can't marry you today, hold this ring. I'm going to cover your nakedness. When you wear this, men will know you're about to be covered. So God sent his son to die as a sacrifice. So that we can, when we accept that sacrifice, he said, now I can cover your sins because you accepted my love. Can you imagine a man walking up to you, giving you an engagement ring, and he don't love you? You'd be a fool. You might take it, celebrate. Especially if you're from Jersey City, but you that's lunch money right there. <laughs> but I won't close. So you see, when, when, when God's love hits us, the first thing we recognize is he's not trying to hurt us. You get shot, and you don't go to medical center. What's the sense? When you get shot, you acknowledge there's a hole, and out of that hole is leaking life. When you hear the word of God, it shows you a hole where you're leaking life. And God wants to plug that hole up yeah. with his love. Yeah. Think about it. He's not out to hurt us. Yeah, that's right. And I'll close with this. Stand to your feet. You're out of time. Please stand to your feet. I'm out of time. But God's not out of love. I'm crazy. Because you know what I you know what I believe? I believe God loves us so much that He can look past all of our mistakes, even the current ones. Because He loves us. But the question is this: can you accept God's love? He loves you unconditionally. Whether you trust him to forgive you of your sins, whether you accept him healing your body, whether you whether you accept him doing everything for you or not, he still loves you. And like I said, Jesus hanging on that cross. When the Holy Ghost lifted, he said, My God, my God, why? Has thou forsaken. So for the next few moments, I just want to open up the altar call for maybe two to three reasons. The first one, if you know someone has hurt you that you love, and you know you need to be healed because there comes a time in each and every one of our lives, don't get mad at me, that the people you love are more important than God. There comes a time because you don't know God that close. And God's not, he's not necessarily upset with that because he knows what you know. You hear me? But then there comes a time when he'll tell you, you have to love me more. But I sense tonight, today, that there is hurt in hearts because people that loved you hurt you and you really need to have that heart healed and if that's you just come on down here and I believe God's going to heal broken hearts because we can't really love until God heals us from the people that loved us or said they loved us 